So we're um, reflecting upon the search for Sri Krishna, Reality the Beautiful, which is the first book that we made for Srila Guru Maharaj. And when the suggestion came that together with Sri Padma Yogi we're um, transcribing tapes, his lectures, and um, how do you say, systematically structuring them, finding parts from one place that might connect nicely with from another place. And uh, I was surprised how uh, involved Srila Guru Maharaj was. It's not like we were just doing this and presenting to him, that's sort of how, but his giving guidance along the way, including the titles for all of these books. And if you notice, there's a pattern, like they have, there's like a statement and then something that follows that. Like this, it's not just called the search for Sri Krishna, which we might say for shorthand, but the search for Sri Krishna, reality of the beautiful, you know, Sri Guru and his grace, you know, um, the golden volcano of divine love, loving search for the lost servant, the subjective evolution of consciousness, the play of the sweet absolute. It's themat Guru that reveals something of how he conceives of things. Uh, and these were novel things for us to hear also. We had some familiarity with Krishna consciousness, uh, but as we were telling the other day on Srila Prabhupada's Divine Grace, Srila Asi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, his um, appearance day, this relationship they had, how intimate it was. And I'll say, because Prabhupada would say these, he says there, um, in that meeting at the Mayapur Chandradaya Mandir, many things were said there actually. We highlight a few of them repeatedly, but many things were said. <clears throat> and one of the things that Srila Prabhupada said was, Krishna and Prabhupada, meaning Srila Saraswati Thakur, Krishna and Prabhupada liked him to prepare me. That he said. He didn't have to say that. That's more than being polite. Uh, he said, Krishna and Prabhupada liked him, meaning Srila Sridhar Maharaj, to prepare me. And uh, Achyutananda Swami, who was um, at the Chaitanya Saraswat Mat before anyone else, and if you think about it, it's kind of amazing. The Krishna Consciousness Movement has only really begun in America for a couple of years. And something connected, you could say, with the Vietnam War, the draft, whenever Achyutananda finds himself in India in like 1968. He's already in India. But it's, uh, it's something about the path of Sukriti as well. Because after, uh, that's where the famous Shikshaguru letter comes from. Because another god brother who was, how do you say, not growing his faith and his Guru Maharaj in the proper way, um, uh, it called into question this um, concept of Shiksha Guru. Okay. Because it's not uh, a light matter, anyone and everyone, you know, or uh, becomes fashionable. Right. So he's just innocently you could say, uh, naively asking like about th the subject matter of Shiksha Guru, th probably never been heard of up to that point. And so, and, and Srila Prabhupada Swami Maharaj can see a couple of his disciples are kind of in trouble 
their faith is becoming damaged, they're, they're going down. And so he says, if you, as you say, you're seeking a Shiksha Guru, he said, then I can recommend to you the one who is the most highly qualified of all of my God brothers. And that is Sridhar Maharaj. He said, he said, what to speak of you? He said, I accept him as my Shiksha Guru. So what to speak of the benefit that you'll get? That's how it came about. The necessity of his disciples. And then he gave this uh, inside information. He's saying, he's my Shiksha Guru. So then what to speak of the benefit that you'll get? And, and so he went to Navadvip. And we know some Guru Maharaj uh, and Srila Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj, they had a lot of affection for Chutananda. He went to Hapaniya, you know, Srila Guru Maharaj's birthplace, and that's where his uh, Guru Maharaj's brother Amar Babu uh, was astonished to see this young American from New York City you know, and saffron, and, um, and uh, 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 sannyasi, and able to quote scripture. He's been trained by Srila Gurumars for nine months at the Mat. So just saying, that's his class is hearing from Guru Maharaj. So when he mixes with other devotees, he is so far uh, ahead of everyone else on the curve. And as a side point, you know, his Sangeet guru, if you will, is Krishna's Babaji Maharaj. So he's hearing, you know, uh, Gaudiya Siddhanta from Guru Maharaj and being trained how to sing the Vaishnava um, Padyavali or uh, Gitavali from Krishna's Babaji Maharaj. And, but so to the astonishment of Srila Gurumar's br brother, he's saying like, we are born here in this land and what you've got, and you're, you know, an American from New York City. <laughs> you know, he's just sort of astonished but because the Chitananda was trained. His response, he said, Brahmanda Brahmite Kona Bhagavan Jeev. Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lata Bij. It is not a question of, you know, uh, location or, you know, uh, what we say, um, you know, GPS in this world. Whether, from, whether someone's from New York City or from any other place. That is, the Bhagavan Jeev, Brahma, having wandered the length and breadth of the universe, and again, what is the universe? Not what we see in the um, teles Hubble telescope. That's the objective side of the universe. And it's it, that is astonishing. And the new one, the Webb telescope. It's astonishing what we see. But that's the objective aspect of it. What is this whole universe really? Brahman, the Brahmite, wandering, it means the world of misconception. That's what it is. This, the, the planets and their positions are the um, you know, uh, objective map of that, but really it's based on misconception. So another way of saying it is having wandered the length and breadth of the world of misconception. What does that mean? Misunderstanding, misconceiving who we are and what our potential is. We were discussing this the other day. Um, when we, I sometimes will say that all suffering is due to separation from Krishna. Right? And, and I mean this to send us thinking in a particular direction. So, and when I say all, I include, here's the suffering of the Braja Gopis to the high part. So we might feel better. The high, their suffering on account of separation from Krishna, but theirs is on, uh, due to intense remembrance. They cannot forget him. Like we, uh, you know, I will say that 
Krishna is wanting to embrace the position of Srimati Radharani, of the devotee and the highest devotee. There's no parallel where you understand the, the end, where devotees want to take the position of Krishna. That's counter to the default position of devotion. Krishna's position is that of enjoyer, etc., and that's contrary to devotion, just as the devotee position is contrary to his position as an enjoyer, yet he wants that. And so the devotees don't want that, but you can say, is there anyone who does? Well, that would be us. <laughs> we want to uh, try, or Guru Maharaj a little more generously says, we're like atomic Shivas. Or you could say Shiva wannabes. Why? Because what is Shiva? Mainam to Maheshwaram. Mayam to Prakriti Vidya. Mainam to Maheshwaram. He's the master of Maya. We want to master Maya. But what I meant to say was that the, the, the devotees don't crave the position ever to, of Krishna, but we're told in their separation from him, they sometimes imitate him. Some gopis get together and one says, I am Krishna and I've come to punish Kaliya. They reenact these pastimes. But I'm saying their separation is due to, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the pain of their separation. It's suffering. It's mentioned in the Jaiva Dharma by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And he's going over all the different arguments that someone might pose along these lines. So, um, uh, when it's, it's that like things like, he'll say, um, as gold is brought to the state of purity by being put into fire, right, it releases it, whatever impurities are there. That, so the jivas, you know, the fire of suffering in this world, it brings them to a purified state, you know. Or you could say in uh, Sattva Gun, um, and it uh, reminds me of uh, I lived once in San Francisco near the house of the fire chief. So there's the fi different fire, but there was like the house where the actual fire chief lives. You know? And that place was extra shiny with brass plaques and where they keep the engines. And I, know, I read the plaque once and it said, By fire shall hearts be proven lest virtue's gold grow dim. I thought, well, that's really wonderful, actually. <laughs> and that's like the motto of these firemen. Like, we need fire to uh, the, the virtuous heart, for the virtuous heart to shine. Right. So Bhaktivinoda, on a similar, he's dealing with that in one aspect in Jayavadar, and so saying that so if the fire brings gold to purity and these miseries ultimately assist or help the jiva to achieve a position where they're ready to uh, receive um, you know, you say higher um, connection, is it really objectionable? That's what they're saying. He was saying there. So the suffering, oh, then the question comes, and he's saying, and it's part of Krishna's leela and his pastimes to rescue the fallen souls. And so the, the inquirer says, but why do we have to have pastimes like that? Why can't it just be like happy pastimes? <laughs> you know, like just make another kind that are just happy. And, and one answer is, well, there's two. One is, he said, if you... Um, remove the free will of the jiva, as Guru Maharaj said, when Gandhi said, freedom means the right to do wrong. If you take away that possibility, you're taking away their freedom. Then they're no different than a stone or some inanimate thing that has no choice. It's only a particular way. That's one answer. The other is that he says, which pastimes do not have suffering. We hear in various descriptions, Yashoda cried herself blind in separation from Krishna. 
It's a metaphor, a matter of speaking, uh, to show the intensity. Cows dying in Rindava, you know, in separation, brokenhearted. So he's saying, show me some pastime, you know, the pastimes of Sita and Ram and the Ramayana, the heartbreak. Right? But when the heart is broken like that, then this mysterious flow comes. So the Braja Gopis, they're suffering. But what do we hear in Charita? Why is Krishna eager to experience this type of suffering? To just fast forward. If it is not mysteriously wonderful and compelling. Bahye Vishajalahoy Bhitare Anandamoy Anandamoy Krishna Premier Adbhuta Charit. We're told this is the wonderful, astonishing quality, characteristic of Krishna Prem in separation. It appears externally like uh, suffering the effects of cobra venom, and internally there's a nectarine shower of, uh, uh, upon the heart. So, and, and Gurudev, Srila Govinda Maharaj, he said, he said, even an animal can understand the joys of union. <laughs> That's how he put it. He said, but who can understand the ecstasy of separation? So Sanatan Goswami Prabhu, toward the end of the Brihad Bhagavatamritam, he says, only true Rasiks can understand this the joy that is experienced in separation. And again, Gurudev, what is Mahaprabhu's tasting matter? Pida bir navakalakuta katuta garvashanir vasano nishyandena sudha manurima hankara sankochanai prema sundari nanda nanda naparo Same thing there, uh, giving Rupa Goswami as the uh, source. So those Brajagopis, to alleviate their suffering, this exalt, this sub, and, and Guru Maharaj again will remind us, if you can understand the depth, the magnitude, the intensity of the suffering of separation, then that gives you a guide to how the, the magnitude, the depth of the joy of union after that. If the greater the degree of this suffering and separation, the greater the joy experienced uh, upon union again. So, those Braja Gopis and the uh, Gopi Gita as relished by Mahaprabhu from the lips of Prataparudra Maharaj, Tava katam ritam tapta jivanam kavibir iditam kalmasha apaham sravana mangalam srimadatatam bhuvi grinantite burida jana. It's from them. The Braja Gopis are singing this. And they're saying the topics of Krishna are life giving nectar and relieve you of all this suffering. So we're saying, oh, that's for ne them. No, mysteriously, wonderfully, it's the same cure for our uh, situation. Where theirs is on account of intense remembrance, ours on great uh, uh, magnitude of forgetfulness. Right? That's the root cause of our suffering. Bayam ditiya binibeshi tatsyadi Ashmiti means forgetful. And be, on account of that, bayam, full of fear, anxiety, angst, um, everything. Because we've, uh, Guru Maharaj calls it <coughs> separate interest. And we've thought that our, what is in our interest and the interest of Krishna, they're not the same. Right? They're not, uh, they don't meet, they're not running in parallel, they're, then you have to um, fend for yourself. So, um, oh, so, <laughs> uh, 
so there was a particular reason I said that with regard to, uh, well, the easiest answer is to say that what they're talking about is the search for Sri Krishna, reality, the beautiful. Okay. And when, it's interesting, when Alexander Solzhenitsyn uh, was given a Nobel Prize in literature, and so when you receive that, you get to give a, a, a lecture, you know, an acceptance speech. And interestingly there, well, you might expect it. He quoted Dostoevsky. Right? But, but he's giving a talk on art. It's the Nobel Prize. For, and he said, Dostoevsky once let drop the enigmatic phrase, beauty will save the world. Right? And then Solzhenitsyn says, like, and who's a great artist, writer, and he said, I was thinking about that, like, beauty, here, art, extent by beauty, it enriches people, li their lives, it, they're better for it, but save the world? That's a little extreme. He said, but then I was thinking, Dostoevsky, he just doesn't unthinkingly make a statement like that. It's not just like off the top, beauty will save the world, what else? If he made a statement like that, it means he thought about it very carefully. So then Solzhenitsyn, which causes him, so he's saying, it, it, if it was said by somebody else, I might not take it that seriously. It was spoken by Dostoevsky, so I have to think about it. So, he said, previously, when people would talk about virtues, or they were talking about truth, goodness, and beauty, you know, that these are those three wonderful things. And, uh, well, then, when we hear this, if we say truth, auspiciousness, and beauty, what is it in Sanskrit? Satyam, Shivam, Sundaram. So, Satyam, Shivam. So, and just to give some credence to what they said. So, here's what Solzhenitsyn will say. He'll say, well, truth and beauty, they move kind of vertic... Uh, truth and uh, goodness, and we're saying auspicious. They move in a kind of vertical path. Since, like, if you thought of them as trees, they could get chopped down along the way. He's saying, but beauty, it's very unpredictable. It moves in an unpredictable way. So he said, so perhaps beauty can do the work of all three. That's what he says. Now, if we go to the Satyam Shivam Sundram side of things, which is Srila Guru Maharaj's side, okay. Sundar, Sundar Ananda, Ananda Sundar, it means Krishna. He is Satyam Shivam Sundaram, the Supreme Absolute Truth. But with the emphasis on the Sundaram, or Satchid Anandam, that's where we get Ananda Sundar. Right? So he's beauty personified, ecstasy personified, all rolled into one charming medium size. <laughs> that's in the Brahma Sangita. <laughs> Uh, uh, commentary. So, you know, Krishna Rajateka Kela Savatam Naralila Naravaputara Swarup. We would think the infinite would be like so big. Because <laughs> you know? we're like, uh, what Sarah said, we have a puppy brain, like our friend. <laughs> puppy brain. You know, so we it must be so big. Right. And then if someone's really clever, they go, what about smaller than the smallest? Well, yeah. Greater than the great. Uh, isn't that in the Upanishads? Anoraniyan mahato mahiyan atmasya jantur you know. And th that's true. Those are the extremes of the infinite. Right. All accommodating Brahma. 
everything fits with. That's why Brahman, Brahm, Brahman type conceptions can accommodate everything. Right? The, but that Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavan. Brahman, that's of the, you could say, the jnanis and the Paramatma, the target of the yogis. Not devotees proper, of yogis. Their target is the Paramatma. Andantarastam chayana, chayamano, chayamano, param, paramano chayantarastam. The devote, what is that? Uh-huh. Okay. So someone in the control room, tell them to control their sound effects. I'm surprised there isn't more of this. <laughs> That's the sound of, of the Brahma, get, you know, reaching to the extremes. So anyway, all accommodating Brahma, greater than the greatest, all permeating smaller than the smallest paramatma, the extremes of the infinite. What is the, as Guru Maharaj says, the central conception of the infinite? The golden mean of the infinite. Right? Human-like, all one's all accommodating, all permeating, one's all attractive, beautiful, charming, and human dimension. And from that human dimension, as we heard the other, his, you know, uh, antre, uh, antre, uh, uh, or itarata chaarteshu, directly and indirectly. He can expand into others from Balaram to the quadruple, the second quadruple to Mahavishnu. Out of his pores come innumerable universes. But the source of him is someone who's in this charming human size. Vrindavan is human size, but in the soil are all the, in a drop of the soil are all the vi innumerable Vaikuntas and el, uh, etc. Right. So we're told in uh, uh, Kaviraj Goswami saying Vrindavan is Shola Krosha, 16 Kroshas means something like 50 square kilometers. That's the apparent dimensions of Goloka Vrindavan, the source of everything. 50 square kilometers, maybe around the size of Chiang Mai. <laughs> but in the soil, and you know, Chintamani is Charanabhushanam Bhushanangam, and what else in there? Um, the Shreya Kanta Kanta Parama Purusha Kopataravo, Druma Bhumis Chintamani. Chemtamani, and so in the soil, innumerable Vaikuntas in one cloud section, innumerable material universes, but one Chintamani gem more valuable than all of them. And, when we hear, and the Braja Gopis are stringing Chintamani gems and wearing them as ornaments on their lotus feet in their human sized world so that. Krishna's human-like pastimes are the template for human civilization. <clears throat> so, oh, so back, so beauty will save the world. Reality, the beautiful. And see, Guru Maharaj is appropriating some of these, he'll quote, he'll say that there was some French poet who used this expression, he, liked, he took it and um, converted it into Krishna conception. Right. And we heard when Prabhupada, Swami Maharaj would uh, translate the prayers of the six Goswamis, the last one, you know, Bande Rupa Sanatana, Raghuriya Goshi Jiva Gopala, the last one, He Radhe Brajadevi Ke Chalalite He Nanda Suno Kutaha. They're, he's saying, they're searching Kutaha means, where, where are Radha and Krishna? Are they on the banks of the Jamuna? Are they in the Brahman? They're searching. So it's the search that has value. 
when, when does the finite uh, achieve the infinite? That would be static. Sometimes when Srila Guru Maharaj will talk about um, an ocean of jo <laughs> you know, joy, he will say, and not a static ocean, like as if like an ocean of joy isn't good enough. <laughs> because if it was a static ocean of joy, <laughs> but he said, no, it's a dynamic, you know, it's like, it's ever expanding. So Krishna is completely satisfied and happy in himself, yet he has this infinite capacity for increased enjoyment. And you could see in one sense, we're depriving him of that. That means there's something, uh, our hearts have some valuable potential. But it's not only, it's not only, but it's, it's a mysterious thing because Mahaprabhu tells Sanatana Goswami, Jive Swarupai Krishna Nitya Das, that we're his eternal servants. That's actually our position. And we were discussing this the other day, and it reminded me of, because um, Ashmati, forgetfulness. Everything. How can we feel, have these feelings for someone we've never met or we don't know about or, you know? Asmiti, forgetfulness. I remember in the 60s, before they had the vocabulary for uh, these, like dementias, Alzheimer's, etc. My father went to visit his father in one of these homes. And he came back and he was very depressed. And I was like, well, you know, asking him what's wrong. And he said, about his father, he said, he doesn't recognize me. And it, I was like, what? And I'm saying, your own father, he doesn't know who you are. He doesn't know who I am. He doesn't recognize me. And it was very um, painful for him, I could see. And I'd never heard of something like that. But so someone who, you know, had this loving relationship for so many years entered a phase where utterly forgetful, ignorant of that, as if it never happened. It's a crude example, but our position is something like that. So when we say, someone we've never known, we don't know anything, how can we, you know, I mean, from our, we can go, that's so sad, <laughs> you know, and a little uh, hurtful. Krishna is infinitely, I mean, remember, he's always happy, but like there was a, the art department in ISKCON Press, they were showing Prabhupada some paintings once, and you know, they show him a painting, and he goes, what's that? And then they tell him what, what it's depicting. So they show this one, and Krishna's like, you know, and he goes, what is that? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and they go, Krishna is sad, or like, and he goes, Krishna is not sad. <laughs> and then he like saved it, like Srup Damodar saved the person from, you know, uh, saying opposedantic things to Mahaprabhu's ear. Brahma said, oh, Krishna has a headache. That pastime. All right, next painting. You know. But, so, He's, we find, and, and so we presented this book, Search for Sri Krishna, Reality the Beautiful. Oh, and I just took, tie that, was that, so the Sundaram, when he said, so in an unpredictable way, Guru Maharaj will quote Rupa Goswami, saying, you know, I hear, uh, hear Eva Gata Prem Naswa Bhava Kuti Labhavet, the Prem moves in a serpentine way. It doesn't move in a straightforward way. So those two things can be harmonized there. So, but, so we did this and then later we did next Sri Guruna's Grace, then Golden Volcano of Divine Love. So, and, and I was wondering what would the next book be and having a discussion with Guru Maharaj, going over different possible books and then a title. And that's when he said, uh, he said, the Lord's loving search for his lost servant. And I was like, listen, and he said, you showed in the first book how we're searching for Krishna. Right? That's why it starts in a general way 
and there are seekers and then and 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 it's structured so that what is the conclusion and and the last chapter is that krishna as mahaprabhu is searching for sri krishna that's the secret <laughs> You know, Atma said the Savali Lapona Sokya Lakshanam when Guru said this is the ultimate reality. Reality is dancing. What do you say? Reality must be dancing. The supreme reality. And that's he means Mahaprabhu. And engaged in this search for Sri Krishna. Kahan Krishna Prananat Murali Vadan Kahan Karun Kahan Pan Brajendranandan. When he could hardly uh, <coughs> maintain his composure to complete the sannyas initiation ceremony. He's, you know, Krishna, Krishna, and madly running. Where is he? Once he's searching for Krishna, searching for Sri Krishna, the reality, the beautiful. Remember, he's always trying to keep his composure and, and resist this for so many years until he can't. And that's when Advaita gives him release, saying, you know, the, the, the mad market has been saturated. Now everyone's, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, full of divine madness. You've driven the whole world mad with your Krishna Kirtan and your divine pastimes. So you've done your public service. Now you can go into your private life. And that means in the Gangbira, behind closed doors with Srup Damodar and Ramananda Roy and what? Uddhava Darshan. What is it? said the, the way Radharani is talking at Uddhava Darshan. What does that mean? It means Brahma Gita. Back to Guru Marjan. The divine madness expressed by Sri Mati Radharani and the depths of her separation from Krishna. That's what Mahaprabhu wants to relish 24-7 24, 24 for the last 12 years of his manifest pastimes and the association of Lalita and Vishaka. Sri uh, Damodar Ramananda Roy. And when we're told, when Advaita gives him release, then it's saying that his internal uh, ecstatic emotional interior doubles, quad it just like magnitude, Richter scale, exponentially. And his uh, verses from Rupa Goswami like Kwananda uh, Kula Chandra Ma, Kwa Shiki Chandra Kalankriti. And the ninth canto. We hear of the uh, Mohini, the churning of the milk ocean, right, on which the moon comes out, Lakshmi Devi comes out, the moon comes out, and others, but it's significant, Lakshmi Devi. So, as Guru Maharaj said, what is it about ultimately not mere immortality? Amrita, the Bhagavatam is not a generic treatise, a uh, 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 treatise on generic off the shelf immortality. It's about rasa, rasa jigyasa. This is what we're going to say. Krishnanu sandan. Brahma jigyasa is a dry thing. Now's the time to inquire about rasa, rasa jigyasa. That means Krishna anusandan. So they're saying, the, as the moon comes out of the ocean, representing Krishna, kwananda kula chandrama. It's very beautiful. Rupa Goswami is saying, the moon who came out of the Yadu, Chand uh, the Yadu Ocean is Krishna. Where's that moon? <laughs> That's what he's saying. Kwananda Kula Chandrama Kwashiki Chandra Kralankriti. And who wears a peacock feather as his uh, Chandrika Alankriti, uh, an ornament. That's not the majestic of Vaikuntha, the thousand armed, no. Who wears the peacock feather? That one. Kwamun Mandra Murali Rava. And the deep sound of his flute. Kwanila, Kwamundra Murali Rava, Kwanila Niladuti. 
Surendra Nila Dutti, and who's my, my shining blue sapphire. That's what he knows. Where is my shining blue sapphire? Kwa rasa rasa tandvi. Where's the rasa of the rasa lila? No, no, what is the rasa lila without the, this one? Where's the rasa of the rasa lila? Then kwa jiva saki jiva uh, saki jiva uh, oshadi. Rakoshadi, oh, Raksha, Oshud. That Krishna is the medicine, my, and he's saying to her friend, remember, but it's Mahaprabhu quoting, my friend, where is that medicine that will save my life? That's Krishna. Nadir mamu suritama kwa bata hanta hadig vidam. You know, this, uh, this, I have to go on living this cursed life, this horrible fate and separation from him. That's the verse of Rupa Goswami uh, expressing the sentiments of Srimati Radharani that Mahaprabhu, when he's engaged in his search for Sri Krishna, reality the beautiful. <clears throat> So Guru Maharaj said, so there you showed the beginning and then it culminates with Mahaprabhu searching for He said, but now we're going to show <laughs> that the Lord, as we are searching for Him, He is searching for us. And then he would say, and it is a loving search. <laughs> a loving search for the lost servant. And just to conclude here, that um, the Briyad Bhagavatamritam, after all those levels of, uh, you know, uh, um, g g diving deep into reality, really, Gopa Kumar, uh, and he finally arrives in Goloka Vrindavan. You know, this is that trajectory of someone from here all the way to there. So what a happy day. And we talk, off in the distance, uh, we, uh, we were saying the other day, verse, Tam go rajas churita kundala badha barha. How beautiful, there's all this dust from the hooves of the calves. So it looks like a cloud from the distance. Just like a moving dust cloud. And then as it gets closer, you start seeing like some shapes. You know, like Krishna's gradually revealed. Then he's got the dust all over and the messed up hair and they're laughing, playing flutes, singing, dancing. Banya prasuna ruchurekshana charu hasam. He's smiling. He looks very beautiful, but he's also smiling. Gopyo didriksha jadrisho bhagama. Oh, no, before that. Um, oh. Venam kwanantam anugay upagita kirtim. And he's playing the flute and all the surrounding cowherd cowherd boys, they're singing praise of Krishna, saying wonderful things about him, slokas, songs. Then Gopyo Dridrikshita Drisho and saying and this is utterly delighting the eyes of the Braja Gopis. They're the observers of all of this. But anyway, so he is there and the clouds are then gradually some shape form. Then he says, Krishna, but he and Krishna make eye contact. <laughs> That's inconceivable. <laughs> An individual making eye contact with the central conception of, you know, the ultimate reality, the Supreme Personality of Godhead can do that. Why don't they say that instead of all these silly things? Can he make direct eye contact? I would suppose that he can, in as much as we can. <laughs> but, uh, and then they start running towards one another. And then when they reach, they embrace and that's when Krishna says, how could you live without me for so long? And then Krishna faints, 
the thing. He just arrived, and because of pastimes like Pralambasura, the the you know imit uh, the fake cowherd boy, who's really a demon who worked his way into Krishna's pastimes, you know, in disguise. So now Krishna faints, so everyone there, they're thinking, who is this Gopa Kumar to have this kind of effect on our Krishna? So immediately everyone is against him. <laughs> so man, that's your first day in the spiritual world. Everyone is against. It was one thing when people are against you on earth. Imagine everyone in the spiritual world doesn't like you. <laughs> And, and wants you to exit. And of course, Balaram steps in on his behalf. No, no, you know. And then, it, you know, it's a happily ever after kind of ending. It ends up at the Nanda Bhavan and the lunch where Radharani cook, she cooks. Soda and Chandravali and her girlfriend there and Krishna, Balaram, Gopa, Kumar and others and they're all taking and Krishna picks up a ladu. Radharani's specialty, Manohar ladu, means like you'll, there, you'll lose your mind. Mind stealing ladu. And Krishna, and, and he makes a face and we're told Yashoda looks at Radharani like, what have you given you? And Chandravali and all her girlfriends, they're all happy. And Krishna, ugh. And he tosses it to Gopi Kumar. Maybe in your family they eat this. Because he has some connection with hers. So everyone's saying it's something bad, a mistake, it's horrible. And Gopi Kumar tastes it. And it's the most wonderful nectarine substance he's ever tasted beyond all time, experience, experience, you know. And then Krishna smiling, he's just te joking. <laughs> he gave him the best thing from his own mouth. Then Chandravali's group, they're like this, and Radharani and Brajra, they're all happy. The search for Sri Krishna, reality the beautiful. Hare Krishna. Sarvad Bhutta Chama, the four things, and then Guru Maharaj told us, really Sarvad Bhutta Chama Kara, I mean, this should be. Leela Karlo Labharadi, Atulya Madhura Prema, Mandita Priyamandala, Tri Jagan Manasa Karshi, Murli Kalakujita, Asamanodva Rupa Sri Vishmapita Chara Chara. How Vishmapita? Even Vishnu is astonished to see the beauty of Krishna. <laughs> so what does it speak of anyone else? But Rupa goes on, these four qualities, and it's not just like, oh, he has four more. Again, this is not ordinary math and things like that. Even one of these four is infinitely valued. His pastimes, and it says, and when it says Atulya Madhura Prima, it's saying Madhura Rasa is only in its full expression in the pastimes of Krishna. That's what it is. And um, Mandita Priya Mandala means and surrounded by the bread of God, you know, Lakshmi Sahasra Satasham Brahma Savya Manam. As Gurudev said, you, in a similar way, one is stand the difference between Vaikuntha and Goloka. Vaikuntha, one Lakshmi, one Narayan. Goloka, Lakshmi Sahasra Satasam. Millions, trillions of gopis for one Krishna. That gives you a hint of the difference. And then, uh, Tri Jagan Manasal Karshi, um, Murli Kali. And with his, he attracts the minds of everyone. And you can say, the three worlds and within this world, or the three worlds in the upper world. With the uh, irresistibly you know, puzzling, bewildering, sweet sound of his flute. Murali Kalakujita. It's inconceivably sweet and intoxicating sound. Oh, Asaman Nordva Mrupasri. 
Rupa Mitsri means, and the beauty of Krishna's form. No, no, no one else comes close to that. Kandar Pakoti Kamani Vishesha Shobham. Ten million cupids personified as one. That sort of, when we say all attractive, the central conception of the infinite is all attractive, everyone being irresistibly drawn towards the center and, uh, and what is it? Bhajaniya, uh, Bhagavan Bhajaniya Sarva Sad Guna Vishishta. And, and as opposed in this world, wanting to acquire, control, and consume things that are lowering us. Here, to being irresistibly drawn toward the beauty, charm, and sweetness of Krishna to offer oneself in service. That's the appropriate uh, response. Hare Krishna. Jai. <coughs> Hari Harai Namo Krishna Yadav Maya Namaha Hari Harai Namo Krishna Yadav Maya Namaha Yadav Maya Madav Maya Keshav Maya Namaha Gopal Govinda Ram Sri Madhusudan Giridhadi Gopinath Madana Mohan Sri Chaitanya Nityananda Sri Advaita Chandra Radha Radha Sri Vasadi Gora Bhatta Vrinda Jai Rupa Sanatan Bhatta Raguna Sri Jiva Gopala Bhatta Dasa Raguna Jai go Jai Kori Charana Bandhan Jaha Hoi Te Vignanash Abhishna Puran Jai go Jai Jarmui Taro Das Tansabada Pada Renu Mora Panchagras. <laughs> Radha Krishna Nitya Lila Kori Lo Prakash Anande Bolo Hari Baja Vrindavan Sri Guru Vaishnava Pade Majai Aman Vaishnava Pad Padma Kori Ash Kori Nam Sankirtan Koe Narottam Odas Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare
Shrimad Paramahansa Paribraja Ka Charja Satara Sata Shri Shrimad Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Dai Jai Om Vishnu Paha Srila Bhakti Rakak Shridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Dai Bhagavan Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Dai Jai Saparikar Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandhava Govinda Sundar Ji Ho Ki Dai Jai Saparikar Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Radha Govinda Sundar Ji Ho Ki Dai Shri Giri Raj Govardhan Ki Dai Shri Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunita Ananda Shri Adaita Gadadha Shri Vasari Gau Vakta Vindhi Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gop Gopna Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Navadip Dham Ki Jai Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai Shri Gupta Govardhan Ki Jai Ganga Devi Dimuni Devi Bhakti Devi Tosi Devi Ki Dai Om Vishnu Pad Vishva Varenya Sri A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Dai Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mata Charja Brinda Ki Dai Jai Sri Bhakti Bhimal Abhidut Maharaj Ki Dai Sanyasi Brinda Ki Dai Sri Bhakti Lalita Devi Dasi Ki Dai Seva Brinda Ki Dai Samaveda Bhakti Brinda Ki Dai Nithai Go Primanande and Maharaj, yeah. then there was <coughs> from Arjun Prabhu, Ukraine, Purushottam Prabhu, USA, Kalyani Didi, USA, Vasananda Prabhu from Russia, Ananda Moi Didi from Portugal, Krishna Kamini Didi from Mexico, Ramsundra Prabhu, Madhur Ananda Prabhu, Italy, Krishna Priya Didi, Eli Dani, and Bhakti Yoga Institute. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai Chaitanya Nithai and Vrindavan Dandavat, Rasananda and Soji Dandavat, Jamuna's mom, Elena in Moscow, Dandavat, Kum Kum Didi, Dandavat, <coughs> Ananta Shakti. That's from here. <laughs> <coughs> Madhavi Lata and Odessa Dandava. <coughs> Gora Chandra Prabhu and Nadhotka Dandava. Malati and China. Nihao. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Dandavat. Anjali Didi and Kaselni. Dandavat. Hare Krishna. And the parents of Janvi Agarwal. <laughs> Sandhya Krishna Prabhu and Maheshri Didi. Dandavat. Maduranan. Prabhu Dandavat, Tapananandini Didi in Mexico, Dandavat, Hare Krishna, Asha Purna Didi, Dandavat, Lila Sundar Prabhu in Ukraine, Dandavat, Priyanana Didi in Lakta, Dandavat, Pavel Brun in Moscow, Dandavat, Lakshmi Priya Didi in Ukraine, Dandavat, Abhiram Prabhu, Dandavat, Nalina, Nalina Nayana, <laughs> Dandava, Hare Krishna, Shamala in Belarus, Dandava, Sulakshan is here doing the Chinese translation, Nityananda is here doing the Russian translation, Praneshri Didi doing the Espanol, Anantadev is in Chiang Mai, Dandava, Bhagavan Das, Dandava, Ajita in Kaselni, Dandava, there's <laughs> Anjali in Ukraine, Dandavat, Hare Krishna. <coughs> Dhananjai Prabhu, Dandavat, Pavan Krishna Prabhu, and Krung Tep Mahan Lakan, Dandavat, Jai Sripad Bhakti Vigrahan Yasi Maharaj Ki, Jai. Prafula Krishna Prabhu, Dandavat, Indu Mukhi, and Mitravinda Devi in China, Dandavat, Chaitanya Moi in Rome, Dandavat, Nama Chintamani in Kiev, Dandavat. Ireland, Wexford, <laughs> Dandavat, <laughs> all right, Kalindi Priya, Ukraine, Dandavat, who else, Rasananda Prabhu, Dandavat, Saksha Gupal, oh, Jai Shilabhakti Randa Madhusudan Maharaj, he's in Ireland right now, <laughs> I should have known, <laughs> and he's Dasanu Dasing, <laughs> serving all the Vaishnavas there, Bhakti Ranjan. He delights in devotion and is a delight to all the devotees. Hare Krishna, glories to your Seva Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 
All right, is that everyone? Sakshi Gopal from Ukraine. Saksh Sakshi Gopal mm -hmm. in Ukraine, Dandavat. And Julia from Kazakhstan, first row. Julia from Kazakhstan, okay, mm -hmm. Dandavat. That's it. Hare Krishna, Vancha Kapatir Vyascha Kripal Sendu Vevata Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha. Hare Krishna. Jai Anushpachil Bhakti Sathirga Sankaraj Ki Jai.